today on the Expect Miracles podcast, we have Dr. Mike Grudadoria out of New York City and Long Island. Dr. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing perfect. How about you tonight? Great, great. Uh, Dr. Mike, I'm real excited to have you on the podcast today. Uh, you heal a lot of neurological conditions. Um, you also do functional medicine. You do blood testing. You do a lot of great stuff, and you see a lot of uh, extreme cases that you're really able to help out and get people better. And that's what the podcast is all about. Um, but before we jump into that, uh, how did you get started? Where are you from and everything? I'm actually from Long Island and, uh, grew up here and went to, you know, was always fascinated with sports medicine and thought, you know, I was, I was into, you know, competitive bodybuilding and played football in high school and so on. And so I always thought I wanted to work with athletes and yeah. became a chiropractor after I hurt my neck. And, uh, how did you, know, you hurt your neck? lifting weights and like way too heavy. Oh my God. It, you know, just, you know, trying to, you know, trying to do more than I should. And, um, just came up from a squat and like, you know, really couldn't get up and then bang, I just felt this explosion in my neck. Ooh. And I went to an orthopedic surgeon, you know, who, you know, ran some x-rays and, and, you know, just put me on like three different medications and I was in college and I was just think, taking painkillers and muscle relaxers and anti-inflammatories. I wasn't getting any better. I couldn't work out. I couldn't focus. I couldn't study. And uh, by chance, um, I've, you know, my mom met a woman who was a chiropractor really? and I had never been to a chiropractor before. And she said, listen, just come to my office and, you know, let me check you out. And literally like two adjustments later, I was, you know, I was off all the med meds and I was back in action. So Love you know, that. natural, yeah, it was a natural, you know, kind of fit for me and, you know, pursued, you know, chiropractic. And so after you graduated college, you just jumped right into a uh, chiropractic school. Yep. And then was very much interested in, um, you know, like I said, sports injuries and stuff and uh, was really intrigued with the brain and how the system worked and neurology and so on. And I got involved with the Carrick Institute for Graduate Studies. And that's started, huge. Yeah, started this uh, neurology diplomate program. And I've been through the program several times already. And they just keep evolving and growing because, I mean, what I learned, you know, when I first got out of college has changed so much. Oh, from what, yeah. You know, it's always changing. Just our knowledge about the brain has changed so dramatically. Yeah. So, um, you know, but as a, you know, as an athlete and, and always working with athletes, I was always so much into nutrition. So I was always working on, you know, diet plans and nutrition. So when functional medicine started to really, you know, come into its own, uh, I started studying there and really, you know, kind of created a little niche for myself, which is looking at the body from three different perspectives, you know, from a structural perspective, obviously from a chiropractic and structural perspective, and uh, that whole musculoskeletal piece, but then looking at what's going on neurologically and what's happening biochemistry, and in their biochemistry. But the interesting thing was when I was in school, I really hated biochemistry. You know, it was just oh, yeah, it's, it's it was awful. one of those you know crazy classes that I thought oh, I just need to study this to pass the boards. Yeah. And now, I mean, literally every day, all I do is you know read labs and look at you know the nuances in people's chemistry to try to break down, you know, some of the, some of the reasons why they are the way they are and, uh, you know, and then create, you know, lifestyle modifications and all different kinds of things to help them go from where they are to where they need to be. So the interesting thing is, I mean, I see everything from children with autism to, you know, patients with Alzheimer's and like, everything in between. So, you know, a lot of people say, you know, how do you specialize in all these different problems? And, it's not that I specialize in treating any of those problems. Really, what I'm looking for is trying to figure out what's wrong with this patient and how can I fix it? Absolutely. Of, you know, trying to come up with a specific uh, treatment for a label. Yeah. So, Dr. Mike, what is, for those that are wondering, functional neurology and how do you help people in your office? Do you, like, what's the consultation like? Is it okay. a blood test right away? How does it work? Great, great question. So, all right. So, functional, when, when people go to a neurologist, neurologists are brilliant diagnosticians. The, tra the challenge for neurologists is that their hands are tied when it comes to treatment. So yeah. if, if you have like, you know, if you have a lesion in your brain, you know, there's nowhere on earth you'd rather be than, you know, in, in New York City with one of the top neurologists. But they use, you know, diagnostic imaging uh, to look for the problems, you know, and, and, you know, electrodiagnostics and so on. But most problems that people seek neurologists for are functional problems, meaning like dizziness, headache, right. migraines. Uh, you know, all these different kinds of issues Stuff that can be fixed. Yeah. I mean, they're all yeah. symptoms. Those are symptoms. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, can't see, you can't see a migraine on an MRI. Right. So, well, you know, that's the thing too. All these people, they come into our offices, 
My CAT scan came back clear. Blood works fine. MRI is not showing nothing. And they're in a world of pain. Right. Right. And that's, you know, and it's a huge challenge because, you know, they're, they're looking for answers. And what we need to be able to do is to give them a different paradigm, a different perspective on what's actually happening. So to then, you know, do a, you know, go through a, a consultation history and then do a physical exam that's looking at how the system works versus, you know, trying to see if it's broken or not, you know, is, is a different way of, you know, different way of thinking. So we're looking for like the nuances in, you know, the, the brain is, is basically creating a way for us to deal with our environment. That's what the brain does. So we're taking in information constantly from the environment through our senses. The brain processes that information and then it has an expression. So the brain's output is thought, movement, and internal function. So if you have an interference with what's coming in, then you have a processing problem and then you have an output problem. And usually that's where people start developing symptoms. Absolutely. So from a chiropractic perspective, it's, it's very similar. You know, we're, we're taught in chiropractic college that, you know, we have a subluxation that's reducing, you know, that's creating nerve interference. Right. Bone out of place, pressure on the nervous system. Right. So, you know, from, from this little shift in thinking, what I'm looking at is as these bones move, as all of our bones move, they drive one of two main brain pacemakers. Our brain has two pacemakers, like the heart has a pacemaker. The brain has two. One of them is dependent on movement. So every time you move, you power up your brain to a certain degree. The brain's an electrical system, but we have no battery and no plug. So where does it get its electricity from? It gets it from this constant input. So we have these different senses, like you know, sight, sound, taste, all these different things. They're called the special senses. But those are on and off throughout the day. If you close your eyes, your eyes don't give the brain any information. But because gravity is working on us 24-7, our body has to be able to counter gravity. So standing up against gravity or sitting up against gravity will drive our musculoskeletal system, which then gives feedback to the brain. Mm. So when we move our, our body, our muscles and our joints, we're constantly stimulating the brain through these receptors, joint receptors and muscle receptors like muscle spindles. Mm -hmm. The other, you know, constant receptor system that's always working is called a vestibular system, which is built into our inner ear. So your brain always wants to know where your head is. Right. So if you closed your eyes and I flipped you upside down, you'd know you were upside down. Right. When you walk onto an elevator, you, you know, you could close your eyes and you'd know if it was going up or down because we have this built in sense that tells us where we are because of gravity. Like I'm saying, those two are very powerful drivers of the brain. When you have a problem in either or both of those systems, you have decreased brain integration, and then you have decreased brain output. That's why chiropractic works, because you, you stimulate the system through a chiropractic adjustment. You power up the brain, and then the brain is able to get back on track. We take it a little bit further when we look at these neurological consequences, and we're looking at how the eyes are moving, how the balance system is working, head position, and all these different things tell I us. I find that very interesting. That's really, really like cool awesome. Little, I love all the yeah. testing you guys do. Yeah. So it's cool details on basically, you know, how things are working and what we could do to make you, you know, make it better. Okay. So let's say someone comes in your office with a migraine. Um, you fix the structural component. Uh, you give them adjustment. What is the functional neurology? Where does that come in at that point? So the first question I ask all my patients is, have you ever hit your head? Yeah. Because one of the one of the biggest things that we see is this the the basically the consequences of post concussion. Mm -hmm. You know, since this whole NFL you know explosion and concussions and all the research and so on, we've learned so much about brain trauma and how it affects us. And even even whiplash injuries can cause concussions. Yeah, it doesn't so take much. It doesn't take much, and the consequences long term can be devastating. So usually people have some, you know, many times, I shouldn't say usually, but many times people have some kind of previous history of some kind of head trauma that may have initiated dysfunction that then led to the migraine syndrome. Now, the other side of migraine is toxicity, you know, and this is where the functional medicine piece comes in because we're living in a very toxic world, a very toxic environment. Oh, yeah. All you know, over. It's everywhere. I mean, you know, food, water, um, air. And we're exposed to metals and pesticides and herbicides and all these different things. So our body has to have a very efficient detoxification capacity. Yes. And when it doesn't, toxins build up and it affects the brain. Your brain is exquisitely sensitive to toxins. You know, if we were to do two shots of vodka right now, 
yeah. on an empty stomach, your brain would be very, very different. You know, it would slow down, you, oh, feel yeah. you know, all these different things. And that's like two ounces of liquid in, you know, in your entire you know, body. And it still is able to change your brain. Well, imagine a lifetime of small exposures that build up because many of these things are fat soluble. They stay inside of us mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it just changes for years. Yeah. So we need to look at all of these different parameters. You know, we look at parasites. Parasites are much more common than you think because doctors are not testing for them. And even when they do, testing is like 90% false negatives. Absolutely. So, and that's a good point. So like when somebody says, oh, I already got blood work, it came, how detailed is just your standard blood work? Oh my God. You know, when, when people come in and they say that, which is all the time, you know, generally, you know, doctors, and, and listen, I, I don't want to ever knock any other doctors because we're all a product of our training. Right. So, you know, we were trained a certain way and we do things the way we were trained because, you know, we, we trust the people that trained us. So, you know, traditional medical training is we're looking for disease. So unless somebody has a very specific problem that we're going to identify a test for, you know, generally they're doing a, a complete blood count, a CBC, a, a straight chemistry panel, a vitamin D, and, uh, you know, maybe they're going to do a, a lipid profile and look at cholesterol. So when patients come in and they say, look at all this blood work I have, I'm like, well, this tells us you don't have any disease, but it doesn't tell us what you do have. It doesn't right. tell us any imbalance. It's ruling out all major pathologies, right? right? Right. So, you know, it's great information. We need that information, but, you know, we need to dig a lot deeper. Definitely. So, okay. So you get the blood work back. How do you, so how do you detox people uh, like from heavy metals and parasites and all that stuff? Yeah. So, so we do blood, urine, stool, and genetics. So, you know, we're really like covering all the bases. My goal, and, and I tell all my patients, listen, half my job is to take care of you. The other half is to teach you. Because yeah. the more you understand about how your body works, the more empowered you are to take better care of it forever. So I'm going to get all these labs back and I'm going to go through each one individually and teach you why I did it and what it means for you. So when we get all these things back, we get a really comprehensive view of like a snapshot in time of what's going on biochemically. So, you know, once we see, all right, this patient has, you know, nutritional imbalances, they have, they could have something called MTHFR gene mutations, which is just one of many, many potential um, epigenetic changes that we're now testing for. Uh, they could have, you know, gastrointestinal dysfunction is rampant. Everybody's got something going on with their gut. The microbiome oh, yeah. is a big deal. Like how we're, how the, you know, we're one tenth human, you know, for every yeah. one human cell, we have nine bacterial cells that live inside of us. And the, the interplay between that bacteria and our immune system and our vitamin production and our brain and neurological systems is huge. Yeah. So all of this stuff needs to be assessed before you can really make some decisions about what to do. So, Dr. Mike, what kind of people do you, what kind of patients do you see in your office and what are the results you're getting? I'm, I'm sure, I think you see some pretty like heavy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because uh, I see it goes through waves, you know, I see a, very often like I'll get a several migraine patients and then those patients seem to know a lot of other migraine patients, you know, yeah, you very a true. Whole, bunch of, whole bunch of people with migraine. Um, I see a lot of post-concussion syndrome, you know, a lot of even, you know, kids all the way to professional athletes. But what I probably see most is anxiety and depression mm. because, you know, it's just so unbelievably common and people either are not getting results from taking, you know, standard SSRI medications or they're sick and tired of taking these drugs, you know, or they just, you know, they just feel like they don't even want to start those drugs. Yeah. So Dr. Mike, I got a question for you. I get this question a lot. So if somebody does come into the office with depression and anxiety, the first thing they ask is, yeah, no, I get what you do, but how is a chiropractic adjustment, a lab test, my nervous system, how does that correlate with depression? That's, you know, you, you have all the good questions. Yes, I do. All right. <laughs> so somebody comes in and they have, they have anxiety and or depression. The first thing I do is ask them, you know, tell me about your past. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about your life you know, what's happening, you know, do you have any, any emotional traumatic experiences? Are you working with a therapist? Are you working with a psychiatrist? Because in order to really help somebody that has these types of conditions, it's a total team effort. You mm -hmm. really need to be working with other professionals. Like I work with amazing psychologists that are integrative psychologists. I have a, a terrific holistic neurologist, a holistic psychiatrist. So 
I have a, and, and I mean, the, the doc that I work with in Manhattan is, you know, one of the top, um, you know, internal medicine, functional medicine pr- practitioners in the world, in my opinion. That's great. So, you know, we have, we have an amazing team. So I feel very confident that, you know, I might be the portal of entry today, but you're probably going to be touched by several of, of these, of these people, because it's really taking a lot many different, you know, angles. When somebody is depressed, when you say depressed, what it means is kind of squashed down, you know? Yeah. So their brain is squashed down and their emotionality is altered. And, you know, when you think about it that way, the brain and the mind are one. You can't separate them. So your brain is this glob of, you know, fat sitting in a soup of chemistry that really inter- interacts with your body. And so what's going on in your body, chemistry, you know, chemically, chemically wise, is affecting your brain. You know, just like we use the alcohol, you know, uh, analogy. Yeah. So there are there are genetic mutations that predispose people to having a reduced uh, production of serotonin and dopamine, for instance. We know that metal toxicity interferes with the production of neurotransmitters. We know that, um, you know, abnormal gastrointestinal function has a direct, you know, gut brain connection. So and we also know that we are living in a wired world and a Wi-Fi world Mm. and the impact of that has yet to even be discussed. It's unknown, right? And so what's happening is we're, we're frying our brains very often. You know, if you, if you put a piece of steak in a microwave, you know, and you put it in for three minutes, it dries out. Oh, yeah. What it does is it dehydrates the tissue. And us sitting in front of a computer yeah. or using a cell phone. This you know, like the time, four or seven. You see every kid walking around just like this these yeah. days for hours. And what's happening is it's having a profound negative impact on our brain. Like I said before, our brain is an electrical system. And these things are throwing out really intense electromagnetic radiation, which has a negative impact on us. So when you look at this as a whole, you know, we're really seeing like, wow, there's the chemistry is involved, the structure is involved, the neurology is involved, their environments involved, and their thought process is involved. And the mindset of getting well really has been squashed because, yeah. you know, they come from a paradigm of sickness. When you get sick, you go to the doctor. When you're not sick, you don't go to the doctor. Mm-hmm. What we're trying to say is, you know what, you really need to be aggressively proactive with your health. Otherwise, you're probably going to be going backward and you're just waiting for a diagnosis. Absolutely. Dr. Sure. Mike, how important is mindset when somebody is trying to heal? Well, you know, it depends on the person, you know, different personalities. You know, everybody's got a different a different perspective. And so I ask people right off the bat, you know, do you do you feel like, you know, you've been floundering for a long time, you know, what do you think the possibilities of you getting better are? Do you think that this is an attainable goal? And when you hear, you know, I'm not so sure I've seen, you know, last night I saw a new patient and they said, you know, you're the 15th doctor that I've seen the 15th. Yeah. That's frustrating for them. So at that point they're saying, you're just another stop to them. Right. Uh, Listen, I I don't want to get my hopes up. You know, I'd like to think that, you know, I, I came here for a reason, but you know, I'm, I'm a little, uh, you know, I'm a little shot at this point. Yeah. I haven't really gotten any results. So, you know, when you, when you talk about the mindset, what I try to do is, is say, listen, the first thing we need to do is, is help you understand how you got here in the first place. So I draw them a little picture and I say, all right, this is, this is you here. You are right now. This is you with all your problems, all your issues, all your stresses, you know, all your successes. You got here because of your actions and your behavior. What you do got you here. Would you agree? A thousand percent, yeah. Okay. So what we want to do is we, we want to change something. We want to change something about our lives. The first thing we do is say, well, let me change what I do, right? So we'll use the, di- the diet example. Somebody says, you know what? I need to lose 30 pounds. Let me go on a diet. So they change the way they eat, and they initially lose weight. But what happens after a while? They, the diet stops and they go back to their old habits. Right. Because the, it's unsustainable because right. they ran out of energy. Mm-hmm. So energy is what drives behavior, mental and physical energy. So I tell them right off the bat, we're going to figure out with all these tests and everything that I'm going to do with you, what's happening with your physical energy. And I'm going to help restore your physical energy. The fatigue is going to go away. So you will have the physical energy to take massive action to, to get these results. But you also have a whole different side. You get mental energy. Where do you get mental energy from? And I explained to him, you get mental energy from your attitude. Mm. 
So when we talk about attitude, we usually say, you know, your attitude is um, a good or bad attitude. You know, that, that guy's got a good attitude. And, you know, to a certain degree, that's true. But attitude really means a relative position. So my attitude is where I think I fit in. So we break it down and say there are four basic attitudes. The first one is a plus plus attitude. I'm okay with me. And Kevin, I'm okay with you. Mm -hmm. I like me. I like you. I respect me. I respect you. That's the only good attitude there is. Plus plus. Plus plus. Then you have plus minus. I'm good. You're not. <laughs> yeah. I'm better than you. I'm smarter <laughs> than you. I'm all these different things. So now that becomes you develop a condescending personality, an overbearing, you know, just, you know, not a good guy. And what happens is as a result of you having that attitude, you have less mental energy to be able to devote to taking action, to changing your outcomes. Then the next, the third attitude is minus plus. I'm not okay, but you are. Kevin, you're better looking than me. You're smarter than me. You have more money than me. Everywhere I go, everybody's better than me. I feel less than. We call that low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And if I have low self-esteem, then I certainly don't have the energy to be able to devote to changing the actions to do different things and take different, you know, have a different outcome. And then the fourth one is a minus minus, which Ooh. is pathology. I'm not okay, neither are you. And that ain't good. We won't even go there. So if yeah. there are four basic attitudes, you think you like the 80, 10, and 10 rule. 80% of the people are going to end up with either one of the two middle ones, a plus minus or a minus plus. 10% of the people end up with a plus plus and 10% end up minus minus. So you have maybe a 10% chance of having a positive attitude. So your mental energy is probably going to be low. So if you have low mental energy, you have a poor attitude, which kind of leads to your inability to, to sustain long-term action. So mm -hmm. your life stays the same. Yeah. But there's one more piece. Where do we get our attitude from? That's a great question. We get our attitude from our beliefs. Okay. So what I believe about myself is formed when I'm a young kid and it's given to me. It's given to me by mother, father, teacher, preacher, peers, and media. Mm -hmm. This group of influencers is constantly telling us. You right. know, and and on a lot of the research, the psychological research says that by the time kids are seven or eight years old, they've been given 140,000 negative messages and 30 to 40,000 positive messages. Wow. So, you know, depending on how you grow up, there's a good chance that you've been given a lot of negative messages which then leads to a negative attitude. Right. But it's never too late to change that, right? Absolutely. You just got to wait. You got to snap out of it. But. This is your, this is your, once you see this and you yeah. understand how it happens, now you go, this is your software program. It's yeah. It's never updated. Yeah. You're walking around as an adult with the beliefs of a, a seven year old. Mm -hmm. So we need to work on this. We call the belief system your self concept. You know, your self concept is, is your self esteem and your self image. Your self-image is how you see yourself and your self-esteem is how much you like what you see. So if we work there and we help people to, you know, come up with ways that they might see themselves differently, how can we build confidence? What kind of personality traits do you think somebody who could easily achieve your goals, what would they have and how can we develop those things? And this is where a psychologist could come in or mm -hmm. a life coach. Yeah. And help, you know, so now what we're doing is expanding their brain. I mean, I've, I've sat down and gone yeah, through personal growth. Personal growth. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah. You know, you got to do you. If you want to have a huge life and you want to be healthy, I always tell people health and happiness are really the two goals. Mm -hmm. And if you want those things, you need to, you need to have a life that's built on a strong foundation. Absolutely. And that's, that's what this whole self-concept is about. So the mindset of health really starts with feeling good about yourself. So when you have, when somebody comes in and they have these chronic illnesses, you know, quote unquote, what I'm realizing is, Hey, I need to find out more about you, mm -hmm. you know? So from a functional doc perspective, I'm really looking to help you as a whole person. Yeah. I'm not looking to just say, Hey, you know, I'm going to try to fix your migraines because your migraines are intertwined with the rest of your, your life. Right. You know, yeah. you develop a mindset. I'm, I'm a migraine patient, you know, they own it. Yeah. They become the diagnosis. Yeah. It's sad. And it's really sad. So, yeah. you know, looking at these things gives you a totally different perspective when you're looking at it from all of these different you know, angles. And then you come up with a strategy and you start working the strategy and you give them homework to do. And not only are they doing things, you know, exercise wise and nutritionally and supplements and 
lifestyle and so on, getting out in the sun, you know, avoiding uh, non-native electromagnetic radiation, you know, a lot of the different lifestyle modifications that we need to do, we call them like biohacks. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also have to help them upgrade their thinking so that they're able to pull this off. Because oh, absolutely. You know, if they if they don't change the way they think, then this will be just another stop on their journey. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree. So, Dr. Mike, I got another question for you. What are those glasses you're wearing over there? Uh, these are cool glasses, right? Yeah, they're, they're nice. So I was saying before that we're, we're constantly exposed to, you know, a lot of, you know, external radiation. Uh-huh. So when we look at the electromagnetic spectrum, we as human beings can only see a tiny piece of it. They call it the visible light spectrum. But there's ultraviolet, infrared, gamma rays, x-rays, all these other things that we can't see. But they're all there. And in order for us to see a computer screen or a phone or a TV, it has to be powerfully lit. So these, com- these technology companies use blue light to actually powerfully light it up. Well, when we're living inside 98% of the time and we're overexposed to all this technology, we become irradiated with so much blue light that it creates an imbalance in the way our brain is taking this light in. So, you know, you have this brain, you know, you have two brain pacemakers. One of them I talked about before, which is in your thalamus that creates these thalamocortical oscillations that comes from movement. The other one is actually in your, um, you know, in your hypothalamus in an area called the SCN that is light driven. So, you know, you're, you're a young guy, but there used to be a show called Little House on the Prairie. Oh, yeah. And Never saw about, it, but heard about it. All right. So it was about <laughs> this family and they, they grew up on a farm. And, you know, so when the sun came up, they were all outside, you know, working on the farm, going to school. Everybody was outside all the time. And then they would go inside when the sun went down and they would have candles and a fire. Right. So they didn't have this insane exposure to indoor lighting that we have. And they had this day night cycle. We call it circadian rhythms. So when you wake up in the morning and you get sunlight, you're, you know, you have this massive surge of cortisol. Yeah. It wakes your body and brain up. And then cortisol slowly comes down throughout the day. And as cortisol is coming down, melatonin's coming up and then you go to sleep. But I mean, everybody you talk to has a sleep problem. Oh yeah. You know, and you know, so all of these different things, they have low energy because their, you know, their adrenal system is shot because they're stressed and they, you know, they having all kinds of issues on that side and then they don't sleep. So this is an imbalance in this brain pacemaker system and we need to recreate it. So after dark, if I'm going to be on a computer, I'm doing a podcast with you. I want to reduce the amount of blue light exposure I get. So I wear these glasses. These are from a company called Blue Blocks. And, nice. you know, what it, does, get it, cuts, it cuts blue light out 100 percent. And so I can still see you. And after yep. a while, you don't even see that it's, a, you know, it doesn't right. look red. It looks normal. Yeah. But what it does is, you know, over the long term, if you think about how many hours you're actually on these technology devices, you can significantly reduce your exposure at night and you'll be like shocked at how much better you sleep and you know all the little things that go along with it so that's amazing where yeah. can you get can you get those where can you get those amazon and uh you can get them um you know what i get you go on blue blocks b-l-u-b-l-o-x.com but you know several companies make them um and you can you know just look up blue light blocking you know blue light blocking glasses and you'll see like you know it's it's becoming a very popular thing because especially in the functional community uh functional medicine community and the biohacking community that talk a lot about it, you know, where, you know, we need to be, you know, trying to avoid overexposure. We were never meant to be living the way we live. Oh yeah. And it's only getting worse. Oh my God. You know, technology has afforded us a lot of really, you know, good things, but also it's killing us. Yeah. You know, the sickness and, and uh, you know, the, the anxiety and depression, chronic neurological disorders. I mean, the the spiking, exploding, exploding. Yeah. Yeah. You know, cancers are, you know, off the chart, despite, you know, the fact that, you know, we, we've been, you know, spending, you know, you know, who knows how much, you know, fighting right. cancer and yeah. than ever. So all of these different influences between, you know, the diet and the lack of exercise and, you know, the, uh, the exposure to these technology devices and all these different things, it's having a negative impact on our body. Oh, so, yeah. You know, we need to help people understand how it's working, where their body is at right now. So we create a baseline. And then help turn it around, and then you'll see all the symptoms go away, like the migraines and depression, and you know all this stuff. I'm actually very, I'm very excited because I've been part. I'm going to be part of a um, 
a documentary. Nice. It's going to be coming out on depression. And What's it called? It's called Food is Mood. Oh, and uh, Food is Mood. I like that. Food is Mood. And several other, uh, you know, three other really high end um, docs in the functional medicine community. I can't I can't say who they are yet, but as soon as I as soon as I get it, I'll send you I'll send you the link. The, Beautiful. Uh, the, when is it, is it coming out soon? Yeah, the trailer will be out hopefully this week. Perfect. And it's about, it actually started with one of my patients who uh, came in, young man, you know, in his early 20s. And um, his mom was a friend of one of my patients. And, you know, my patient calls me up and says, you know, can you see my friend's son? And I said, sure. And she goes, no, can you see him today? And I said, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that night, you know, this young guy comes in and, and uh, you know, he looked like a million bucks. I thought he was a GQ model. And I said, <laughs> he looked up, you know, and yeah. And he's like, oh, man, you know, I've just I've been through the mill. You know, I've been on all these different meds and, you know, I'm just really, really, really depressed. I can't get out of bed. But and I said, well, what do you, what's going on in your life? He said, well, I'm a college graduate. I have a great job. I have a great girlfriend. I play guitar in a rock band. We just got signed to a record deal. So I'm thinking, wow, this doesn't sound emotional. This sounds physiological. Right. And we ran this whole panel of tests and then just started working with him. And like, you know, several months later, the guy was all better. Love that. And he wrote an article about it because he wanted to spread the word. And a producer read the article and said, I want to do a documentary. Wow, look at that. That's yeah. unreal. Yeah, it's I'm pumped question. to see that. I'm going to look yeah. into that. I'll send it to you. Perfect. And Dr. Mike, uh, what is one piece of advice that you have taken with you over the years that you would like to gift and share with the people? Could be absolutely anything. I would say probably that you have to go through life with an open mind. You know, the uh, I would say we tend to create opinions, form opinions about things. And, you know, before we really get all the, all the information or from previous exposures, we, we pass judgment and then, you know, things could change and we still have a closed mind to a lot of things. And I tell you, you know, every single day I learn. I learn from my patients. I learn from the, the doctors that I work with. And I think open-mindedness is probably yeah. the biggest thing to, uh, to try to keep it and being grateful. I mean, that's the number one thing. Being grateful is probably even supersedes open-mindedness. I agree. Well, Dr. Mike, thank you so much for coming on. Really enjoyed this episode. You're a wealth of knowledge on many aspects of healing. And I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. Thanks. Yeah. If you, you know, if you want, I mean, people can check out the website. It's the optimum you with the, just the you.com. That's your website. That's my website. The optimum. Okay. And uh, you're on Facebook and anything else? Instagram, yeah, Instagram, same thing. The optimum you. Perfect. All right, Dr. Mike, I'll talk to you soon. This episode should be out in a week or two. I'll email you all the links and uh, we'll take it from there. All right. I really appreciate you having me on. You're doing an awesome job. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Take it easy. All right. Bye.